Hello and welcome to the episode 37 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today's highlights include an old concert, a live TV appearance, and an interview with half-spoken truths bordering on lies. On the 6th of February 1958, the Quarrymen performed at the Wilson Hall in Liverpool. For the occasion, the band consisted of Len Gary on T-chest bass, Eric Griffiths on guitar, Colin Hanton on drums, John Lennon on guitar and voice, and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice. Years later, George Harrison recalled meeting the band there during this concert, but this is only one version of the story. When interviewed on the matter, drummer Colin Hanton recalled that George was introduced to the band on the 13th of March after a gig at the Morgue Skiffle Cellar. Harrison's mother, instead, remembered that George met the band at a local chip shop. Finally, Pete Shotton, former member of the Quarrymen and close friend of John Lennon, recalled that the lads were led to George's house in Speak by his school friend Paul McCartney to meet him and hear him play the guitar. Moving on to 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed for the third time in a week at the Latham Hall in Liverpool. It was yet another BK Promotions event. 1963, third stop of the National Package Tour with Helen Shapiro. This time, the Beatles and the other acts on the bill performed at the Granada Cinema in Bedford. On this date in 1964, George Harrison and John Lennon were interviewed about the band's forthcoming trip to the US. A very excited John declared that he intended to buy lots and lots of records. In 1968, between 10.30 am and 1 pm, Ringo Starr was at the BBC Television Theatre in London for the final round of rehearsals for his appearance in Scylla the TV special dedicated to Scylla Black, now in the second season. After a second rehearsal between 2 and 6.30 pm, the program was broadcast live between 8 and 8.50 pm on BBC One. Ringo appeared in several slots, participating in two sketches and singing with Scylla an a cappella version of the 1905 song called Nelly Dean, plus dancing and singing with her Do You Like Me, an oldie from 1917. In the meantime, the other three Beatles were busy at the EMI studios, working between 2.30 and 8.00 pm and between 9.00 pm and 2.00 am. The hour break was probably due to them sneaking into Paul's home near the studio to watch Ringo on TV. They almost completed the inner light with George Harrison adding his vocals on the backing track recorded in Bombay, India, as we've seen in episode 12 of What A Fab Day. In addition, a member of the London's Asian music circle enriched the track with an overdub of a classical Indian reed instrument called She and I. The song was mixed down towards the end of the first session. Starting from 9.00 pm, the Beatles perfected the Lady Madonna with a host of other dubs. Paul's new vocals, piano, hand claps, backing vocals from Paul, John and George, a vocalized imitation of a brass session leading to the recording of four real saxophones. The two tenor and the two baritone saxes were played by Harry Klein, Bill Jackman, Ronnie Scott and Bill Povey, called at a very short notice to the studio. Lady Madonna 2 was mixed in mono before the end of the session. Finally, in 1970, John Lennon and Yoko Ono were interviewed at the Apple headquarters by David Bellan for the BBC Radio 1 show Seen and Heard. John admitted that the Beatles had no plans for the future, but he also said that he wouldn't destroy the band out of hand. The stop could be a rebirth or a death. He pointed out that a similar lack of activity had characterized the life of the band before the release of Sgt. Pepper and that the task of appointing a manager for Apple and the loss of control of Northern songs had created a fair deal of friction. 
The truth, naturally, was that it had been months since the Beatles had worked as a unit, and actually since the four of them had been in the same recording room together. This time around, they really didn't miss each other, nor the continuous infighting that had marred the last months of the band's life. Without mentioning that, Lennon did inform Bellen of his intention of recording an album with the Plastic Kona band, produced by Phil Spector, and that Paul McCartney was planning to release his own solo album. The edited interview was broadcast on the 15th of February between 3 and 4 pm. This concludes today's episode of What A Fab Day. As usual, if you feel like supporting this podcast or my other music-related series, please visit www.simonmas.com support to find out what you can do. In the episode description, you'll find a link to the podcast bibliography, with lots of Amazon affiliate links for your shopping needs. See you tomorrow for another episode. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.